it's Connie from Faf Designs. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a furniture painter and I'm also a brand ambassador for Dixie Belle Paint. Every week I paint something different. Variety is the spice of life and that's the motto I like to live by. So last week we did a really kind of layered bohemian look with terra clay paint. This week I'm going to do a one colour finish and make it kind of quite modern and quirky. So step one is to always start with cleaning your piece. This one's no exception, it's filthy. So I've actually mixed some white lightning and water solution in an old spray bottle and I'm just using that. And then what I'm going to do afterwards is just give it a good rinse to make sure there's no cleaning product on the surface. So once that was all clean and dry, I then had to sand the top. As you can see from the video, the top was really badly scratched, so um, it basically needs quite a heavy amount of sanding to get all of those scratches out. So we're going for a really smooth one colour finish on here, and those types of finishes are quite unforgiving in terms of imperfections. So prep work is really important if you are trying to achieve a smooth finish. So I am using a 120 grit sandpaper on my electric sander and I'm basically just making sure that all of the scratches are sanded out. Now if you do have anything that's really deep, you can obviously fill them. Most of these were light scratches, surface scratches and scratches that I could sand out. There weren't anything um, too deep. So I'm just making sure that everything is nice and smooth. And then for the rest of the piece, I'm just going to go ahead and mainly scuff sand. Don't take any notice of that one drawer. Um, I was having to play around with something and then had to sand it all off. Um, so that drawer is the odd one out, but the rest of the drawers just needed a quick scuff sand and basically you just need to be able to run your hand over where you've sanded and make sure it's super smooth, there's no scratches, um, there's no flaky bits of varnish or anything like that because obviously if you do have anything like that, that will show through in your paint finish. And then I'm just going to tape off the sort of upper part of the leg just so that I've got a nice clean line where my paint is going to finish. Okay, next I'm going to use Dixie Belle's Boss Primer. So this is predominantly going to be used for stopping bleed through because the wood that I'm painting is quite a warm toned ready wood and it is susceptible to bleed through issues so i'm mainly using it for that but also what i'm going to use boss for is to create a really good blank canvas so obviously i have various different surfaces on this piece some of it is, is sanded quite heavily um, it's actually a veneer as well so some of it's sanded quite heavily some of it has the existing finish in place and because I've got various different surfaces, what can happen is if you go straight in with paint, sometimes that absorbs differently into those different surfaces. So by giving it a couple of coats of primer, it just means that you are going to achieve a much smoother and more consistent finish with your paint. So as you know, if you've watched some of my other videos, when I've got a really sort of leggy piece like this one, I usually tip it upside down and do the underneath first. And that's just basically gonna stop me having to keep tipping it over and upside down and back, back on its feet again. Um, so I'm just gonna get that bit out of the way while it's upside down. I'm also gonna paint the back of this unit. I don't always paint the backs of pieces. But I am going to do this unit because the back is pretty ugly. Um, there's nothing special about it. Um, and I just think it'll give it a little bit more of a cohesive look. 
All the underneath parts that were hard to reach have had two coats of boss. So boss is, like I say, it's a bleed through blocking primer and it comes in three colors. I'm using gray because the color that I'm gonna be using for this piece is one of those colors that just requires an extra coat compared to what you'd expect. Um, so for example, Dixie Bell, the majority of Dixie Bell covers cover with two coats really, really well. Florida Orange, which is a color that I'm gonna use, is a very vibrant color. And those kind of colors don't have any or very little white pigment. And white pigment is the pigment that helps with coverage. So that doesn't sort of have any, it just has a clear base. And that basically means it's a really vibrant, punchy color, but it does mean that to get that coverage, it will probably need three coats. Undercoating in a gray can really help with that coverage. I'm also using a roller, which I don't usually use, but for these pieces, rollers are very effective because it allows you to just paint those really large flat surfaces super quickly and get really, really even smooth coverage. So I'll just whiz through the next bit. As you can see, I'm just giving the rest of the piece um, a coat of boss and then I did do a second one afterwards. The drawers I've taken out of the piece and I'm gonna be painting those separately just because I feel like I can get a much better finish when I take the drawers out of a piece. So the other thing that's gonna really help you get a smooth finish is if you give your pieces a quick sand in between each coat. So I'm using a Dixie Bell sanding sponge and I'm gonna use the same sponge throughout the whole project because as I use it more, it will start to get less rough, which means it will give me a much um, sort of less aggressive sand, if you like. So this is the first coat of Boss. Sorry about the um, bum shot there, apologies about that. Um, but this is the first coat of Boss and I'm just really lightly sanding between the layers before I apply another one. And it's also really important to remove the dust that you have created by sanding that surface. So I'm just using a microfiber cloth, but you can also use tack cloths to get rid of the dust. Okay, fast forward a little bit. So I have applied two coats of boss in between each coat I've sanded. I've also sanded the second coat and wiped it back. I'm gonna use a roller to apply my chalk mineral paint. I'm using the color Florida Orange, as I mentioned before. It's a really punchy, vibrant orange. So I'm just giving it a good shake to make sure all of the heavy ingredients are mixed thoroughly. And then I'm gonna decant some in my roller tray. So I always use a roller tray when I'm actually applying my paint. You'll notice I didn't for my boss, I just used a paper plate because the process is a little bit quicker. But um, this way you get exactly the right amount of paint on your roller. So that contributes to what I would say would be good coverage for a roller. If you use too much product, you're gonna get a lot of texture from the roller. And if you don't use enough product, product, you will also get unwanted texture. And then the application for the paint is fairly straightforward, but I'll tell you what I do just in case it helps. I know a lot of people do struggle with getting a smooth finish. Um, but the good thing about chalk mineral paint is that it does want to self-level. It does want to be flat. That's not to say you can't achieve other finishes with it, but it does have a self-leveling property in it. So all I do is I load my roller up and then remove the excess on that kind of little textured pad that you get. I use that to remove the excess, which means you've got the optimum amount of product in your roller, and then just roll it in one direction um, to get you know consistency. And the thing is with rolling, you do not want to press on. It's the same with using a brush. If you press up, press on too hard, you will get kind of lines where the roller's edge is kind of um, making sort of lines in the paintwork. So you want quite a light hand 
Again, you don't want to press on too hard, but you want to make sure that you are sort of, you're pressing firmly. And I just, for the drawers, I go all the way around the edge and then I will do a couple of sort of forwards and backward motions to get all that paint really consistent and even. And then the last thing you want to do is without putting any pressure on the roller at all is just roll the roller across the surface of the paint, the wet paint. Like I say, no pressure at all. I'll show you a close up in a sec what I mean. And that is just going to give you that really smooth finish. Okay, let's move on to the top. So the top is the biggest, flattest surface. And it's really hot at the moment in the UK. So I am going to use a really light mist of just ordinary tap water in my mister bottle across the surface just to help that paint sort of keep open until I've had enough time to kind of lay it off and also it's just going to help sort of spread that paint over the surface really evenly. So I know there's a lot of talking in this video and I'm not speeding a lot of it up but that's because I want to show you kind of real time how I apply the paint to get that smooth finish. So I'm just going all the way around the edges to begin with just to make sure that I'm getting that lip. There's a small lip um, all the way around. I'm just making sure that I get all the paint in that kind of raised up bit. And then I'm gonna load my roller up as I've explained previously. And I'm just gonna roll that paint all the way down the top of the piece in a sort of straightish line. Um, I just find this helps with application. Like I say, there are loads of ways to apply paint to get a smooth finish. I'm just sharing one particular technique that I use. So then what I'll do again, load the roller up, go back, but don't go quite up to the line of the last roller application. Take it in a few inches because what you'll do is you'll end up with too much paint on the surface of that kind of line, that join where the two sort of rollers, sort of roller lines join together, if you catch my drift. You don't want too much paint. That's gonna lead to texture, like an orangey peely texture, which you do get with with rolling um, anyway. You do get a slightly different texture to versus using a brush. But if you use too much paint, then it is, pretty obvious that um, you do get that really sort of pitted orange peel kind of look. Okay, you can see how quickly I did that. Most of it is in real time, but I did speed up a little bit, but it's still wet. The paint is still wet. And what I'm doing is again, just using that, you can see I'm not even holding the roller. I'm just sort of holding the handle underneath my hand. So there is no pressure at all on that roller handle, I'm not pressing down on the surface, and I'm just basically smoothing out anything, any texture or any sort of thicker bits of paint, and that's just gonna give you that smoothness. And then for the legs, obviously what you don't wanna do is use too much product on the legs because you will get kind of drips and pools of paint on the sort of edges. So without applying hardly any sort of any new product, I'm just using what is on the roller from doing the top. I am just doing a really light coat on all four legs. It's much better to work your layers up and apply several thin layers of paint than it is to try and get that coverage in one or two coats and end up with loads of texture and drips and runs and all the rest of it. Okay, so everything's dried. We're going back with the same sanding sponge. You can see it's starting to get a little bit softer. And again, I'm just lightly sort of rubbing it over the surface from left to right, using kind of long strokes to get a smooth finish. If you cut, kind of use short kind of scrubby um, strokes with your sandpaper, I'll get my words out in a minute, um, you obviously aren't gonna sort of get that smoothness. So always try and kind of go in one direction and kind of just do really smooth strokes. And if you run your hand over the surface of before you start 
and after you will notice a massive difference. Now you can see me scrubbing there, which is what I've just told you not to do, but there was a little bit of texture. And if that is the case, this is exactly the right time to try and get rid of any unwanted texture. Again, take your microfiber cloth and just rub away any dust on the surface. And then basically just repeat that step until you have sufficient coverage. So I used three coats of Florida Orange on this piece. I thought it'd need three and it did. I feel like this process is not my favorite kind of painting to do, but it does suit these pieces really well. I've done quite a lot of this brand of furniture and I always kind of stick to one color finishes with them because I think it really looks effective. Okay, so we're gonna pretend that all three coats have been done. I've skipped forward because you don't wanna see me applying three coats of Florida Orange in exactly the same way over this piece. So you can see on the sanding sponge that it's really kind of knocked down that grit on the sanding sponge now. This is the last coat. So this is the third coat that you can see. And I am lightly sanding all over, hardly putting any pressure on the sandpaper at all before I top coat. I am gonna lightly spritz the surface once I'd removed the dust. I didn't record that bit for some reason, but I did remove the dust with a microfiber cloth. Lightly spritz the surface, and then I'm gonna use my roller to apply clear coat in gloss. Again, there are so many techniques to apply in top coat. If you've got one that works for you, then by all means stick to that, but I'm just showing you one of the techniques that I use. So again, I'm just loading my roller up with the product and then I'm just getting the roller down, getting the product down, not the roller down, getting the product down on the surface. That little spritz of water is just gonna help um, increase the open time slightly of the product and just help that first coat of clear coat go on smoothly. So again, just rolling that roller over the surface before the top coat has had chance to dry, just to smooth out any areas, got a little bit of fluff in it there, just to smooth, really smooth out that top coat and then let it dry. Don't re sort of go, go over it again. Don't be tempted, if you do see any sort of splodges, don't be tempted to try and sort those out. And in total, I did three coats of the top coat. And just before I put the drawers back in, I am gonna use Big Mama's Butter on the inside of this piece. So all of the drawer runners um, are wooden, and this is a really good product for conditioning those drawer runners and making sure your drawers run really smoothly. So I'm using the La Petite brush, which is a natural bristle, br bristle brush. I can never say that word. It's also got a tapered end, which means you can get in all of the corners and make sure that product is covered all over the surface of whatever you're applying it to. As well as applying it on the inside of the piece, I'm also just gonna do the sides of the drawers. You can just see the sort of where the runners sit there. That's all wood, so it's fairly dry. You can see the difference on applying this product. It really nourishes the wood. It's got lots of uh, ingredients in it that help nourish and condition the wood. So I'm just applying it all over the side and you can see how sort of effective it is bringing that beautiful wood grain out. I also did the same on the drawer interiors. So not only does this nourish the wood, it smells phenomenal. My favorite scent is Orange Grove because I'm a citrusy kind of gal, but there are other scents in the range as well. There's also an unscented version of this product if you are sensitive to smells. 
and you can also add a couple of drops of your own essential oils into the unscented one to create your own bespoke smell. The last thing I did was added some wooden handles and I feel like I've spoken quite a lot throughout this tutorial so I'm just going to let you enjoy that really gorgeous shine and that vibrant orange colour. Thanks for watching the video today, I hope you found it useful, maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't, hopefully uh, you enjoyed it anyway and next week I'll be doing something completely different so make sure you hit subscribe and ring the notification bell.